Hey everyone, I briefly mentioned Smart Summon in my previous video about the software version 10 update, but since then the feature has gained quite a lot of attention, understandably. So this week, let's take a closer look at Tesla Smart Summon, and perhaps also try to gain some insight into some of its behaviors and limitations. To use the Smart Summon feature, first make sure that Summon is enabled in your car's settings. Then open your Tesla app, tap on Summon, then tap on Smart Summon. And at this point, you can either choose to have the car come to you based on your GPS location, in which case you should probably wait for a, a pretty accurate GPS lock on your phone before attempting this. Or you can drag around and set a rendezvous point that you want the car to travel to, and then you press and hold Go to Target for the car to travel to that target point. Releasing the button will cancel summon and cause the car to stop. When using Smart Summon, it's very important to keep an eye on what the car's projected path is, as shown by the blue line extending from the red arrow, with the red arrow, of course, representing the car. Sometimes Smart Summon can make some very strange path decisions that it then has to revise mid-course, and the car may not always end up where you want it to be as a result. So pay attention to that before you hit start. It's important to keep in mind that the maximum range of Smart Summon is 200 feet, and you absolutely need to keep the car within line of sight the entire time for safe operation. As with testing any system, it's important to test in a safe environment and the simplest possible scenario first. So in this case, we'll see if the car can round the bend on the driveway and come down the driveway without hitting the house, hopefully, or the camera. It's going real wide. Oh no, it's, it's going okay. Oh, well, that worked pretty well. Didn't even drive into the dirt that time. Well, that was simple enough. Let's try to get it to reverse back to where it was. Reverse can be somewhat problematic with Smart Summon because, well, you have to pay attention to its projected paths. Oftentimes, when you're adjusting it, it'll try to take all kinds of wacky paths if you're just trying to get it to reverse. And, okay, it's kind of going. What's it? Are you done? That's not quite where you were. Close enough. Civilian GPS without augmentation is good to about three meters or so, so we shouldn't expect too much in terms of ultimate accuracy when it comes to the go to target feature. So let's move on to other things like object detection. Smart Summon utilizes the whole autopilot suite, including the camera, so hypothetically detecting, say, a pedestrian or other vehicles shouldn't be an issue for it. So let's try that out real quick here. We'll start the summon. There it goes. And so by walking near the vehicle, Oh, okay, it says waiting for path to clear, waiting for pedestrian, and then as I move out of the way here, it should resume. I'm not sure why it's resuming by backing up. There it goes. Okay, but can it detect and respond appropriately to traffic cones? Apparently it can. What if a quickly moving object suddenly enters the car's path? All right, let's try that again. Well, it worked that time. So I guess it does detect an object moving quickly into its path, but perhaps not reliably for objects that are only as tall as a traffic cone. Needless to say, I don't think I'm gonna run in front of the car to test this myself. But can it slalom through those cones? Okay, I wasn't expecting that, but because it had to back up, I'll give this one a maybe. Can you ride in the car while using Summon? 
Yes, you can, but it's not exactly the most comfortable experience. You can even summon from the driver's seat, though I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to. It's also important to note that if you're in the driver's seat while summoning, any input, so like steering input like this, will bring the car to a stop immediately. And when I say any input will stop the car, what I mean by that is in addition to steering input stopping the car, pressing the button on the end of the drive mode selector stop will start stop the car, toggling the stock up and down will stop the car, pressing the brake pedal will stop the car, pressing the accelerator pedal will stop the car and abort summon. So there, there's a lot of different ways to terminate summon from inside the car, from the driver's seat. Opening doors terminate summon, um, so there's no shortage of ways to stop it. What does the system do if the cameras are obscured? I've gone ahead and put masking tape over the car's three forward-facing cameras, so the only forward-facing sensors that the car has right now are the forward ultrasonics and the forward-facing radar, and I guess there's probably also some forward vision from the B-pillar cameras, but those have a significant blind spot right at the front of the car. Uh, so, hypothetically, the car shouldn't do anything when I try to smart summon it forward, or at least if I were involved in the process, it would throw an error or something instead of trying to proceed, because it's using those cameras for pedestrian identification. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get out of the way here, and we'll give this a shot. All right, here we go. Oh, what? No, no, no. That should not be moving. Okay, it's... What is it doing? Reducing speed until visibility improves is the error I'm getting on the screen right now. It should not be driving down the driveway. Okay, and at the moment, uh, I'm walking in front of the car here, it is not indicating that it sees a pedestrian at all. I am simply getting the error that it is reducing speed until visibility improves. Yeah, that really shouldn't do that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. All right, time for take two, but this time all of the car's cameras are covered by tape. Let's, let's see what it does. Okay, starting summon. It, it's, it's still trying. Waiting, okay, so now it's stopped and says waiting for improved visibility. All right, so how many, how many cameras does it need to see from before it'll start moving? All right, so let's, let's take off, let's take off the passenger side B-pillar camera tape. Okay. No, still waiting, okay. What if I take off the tape on the rear camera? No, still waiting. Oh, nope, now it is moving. So I guess all it really wanted was the rear camera to be uncovered. Okay, it doesn't indicate that it's detecting pedestrian. Nope. Hmm, think I'll cancel it. <laughs> this should not be doing this. It'll even summon on dirt roads. Kinda. Putting all of this together and moving into the parking lot environment that the feature was meant for, I found that Smart Summon seems most concerned with finding the shortest path to a target, regardless of whether you're using the come to me feature or if you've set a destination for the car to go to. It, it seeks the shortest path possible and in the process, um, largely ignores things like, you know, going down parking lot aisles and then turning around an island to get to the next aisle. If it sees a spot where it can cut straight through, like it does right here, it'll do that. It'll wander around and look for spots between cars that it can snake through to shortcut. And 
it, it seems like when it can't find that, then it kind of reverts to sort of respecting the layout of a parking lot. And this is, of course, all the more reason to keep a very close eye on the car when using Smart Summon. Moreover, Smart Summon's 200 foot distance limitation, which is about 61 meters, is not that far in a parking lot. Here, for example, the car is right on the edge of that maximum distance. And yeah, it's actually pretty close. Ultimately, this limitation sort of restricts the usefulness of Smart Summon in its current implementation to fairly small parking lots if your goal is to have the car meet you at the front of a business or at a sidewalk or something like that. Unless, of course, you just make sure that even in larger lots, you're always parking within 61 meters of where you want the car to try to pick you up. Populated parking lots present even more of a challenge for Smart Summon. You can see in this example that the car, rather than backing out of the parking space, proceeded forward through to the next parking aisle because there was no vehicle in front of it blocking its path. And then it spends a little while here kind of veering toward the left side of the aisle trying to, to find a way through the cars, I guess, and then decides to give up on that and head straight down the aisle. While Smart Summon did do an okay job executing that turn coming out of the parking aisle, it did end up kind of missing its target significantly and veering off to the left and then backing up to reorient itself. And at that point, we just canceled the summon test so that we could get in and move the car out of the way so that we didn't interrupt the flow of traffic through the parking lot. Populated parking lots present a lot of obstacles and challenges for Smart Summon, especially if it is a fairly busy populated parking lot. So something where there are a lot of pedestrians walking around and vehicles parking and leaving and entering the parking lot and all that stuff. Um, all of those things can cause Smart Summon to slow down, can cause it to stop frequently in ways that will sort of confuse some pedestrians, confuse other drivers, and just make the car take a very long time to get to you. And sometimes get stuck in like this weird limbo state where it won't really be sure what to do. It'll just sit there until it perceives the path as having cleared. But, you know, ultimately, you're just frustrating everyone, including yourself. So with all of that said, what's the takeaway here? What have we learned? Well, Smart Summon isn't particularly fast, and it does have a very limited range, so you either need to park close or use it primarily in small parking lots. Its reaction to objects quickly entering its path, or at the very least small objects quickly entering its path, is inconsistent at best. It has no respect for the layout of a parking lot and kind of drives wherever it pleases so long as it doesn't detect an object in its path. Smart Summon is pretty good at identifying pedestrians, even if they aren't directly in front of the car's path, they can be off to the side and it will still slow down and behave more cautiously in their presence, so that's, that's a plus. The system doesn't seem to like reversing, so it'll often choose paths that allow it to travel forward and then loop around rather than backing up. And if you do have the system reversing, like with what I was showing earlier, where you set a target behind the arrow and then slowly drag it further away from the back of the arrow, um, oftentimes the car will try to turn itself around in the process so that it finishes the summon traveling forward. Another positive is that Smart Summon does seem to react to traffic cones, so that's a good thing, although they do complicate the pathing somewhat and may cause the car to behave in ways that, again, confuse other drivers in the parking lot. But I think that the most concerning thing coming out of this was finding that Smart Summon attempts to function with the cameras obscured. Even in a situation where only the rear camera and like one B-pillar camera has visibility, it still attempts to summon. It only occurred to me after testing that the blue painter's tape I was using, which did obscure the camera's view entirely, wasn't wholly opaque, which meant that the computers were being fed uh, blue instead of black. I, I don't know if that would have made any difference in how smart someone function, so I may, I may have to revisit that. What I think that test did show, though, is that Tesla is still relying very, very heavily on the ultrasonic sensors, and that's probably part of why the car slows down in limited visibility situations, so that it is moving slow enough to where if the ultrasonics detect a static object, the car will be able to react quickly enough not to hit it. But that doesn't really protect the car from non-static objects, like other drivers driving quickly through a parking lot when vision is obscured and it's leaning entirely on the ultrasonics. Just the ultrasonics alone really aren't enough to safely navigate a 
parking lot environment. I mean, I can understand smart someone proceeding cautiously for a little while when visibility is reduced. So say the sun is shining in one of the cameras directly and it reduces the visibility out of the key camera. And so I, I can understand it moving forward um, uh, slowly until it, it clears that, that reduced vision situation. However, in the test I was doing, it seemed like there wasn't really um, like a sanity check on how long it kept going before giving up. Granted, I was only testing it in, in the driveway. Lastly, and something that I didn't demonstrate in the video, Smart Summon requires an active data connection for both the car and the phone initiating the summon operation. So if you're in a parking lot with spotty cell service or whatever, and you're using Smart Summon, and the connection between the phone and the car is lost, the car will abort summon and stop. Wherever it is, it will stop. Put on the parking brake and just wait for you. This got kind of interesting for some of my earlier smart summon testing because, at least in the US, the cars are on AT&T's cellular network, whereas my phones aren't. So I had to find locations where both AT&T had decent coverage and my carrier had coverage for smart summon to work correctly. And I also ran into situations to where in here in the Antelope Valley, AT&T's coverage can be a little spotty depending on how many people are using the tower. So you can have decent cell coverage according to the car, but not actually be able to reliably pass data back and forth. And those situations will also cause smart summon to abort. And then inevitably your car is just stopped in the middle of a parking aisle and you walk up to it to get in to fix it while everyone's staring at you. And then your key, your, your phone key doesn't work. And so you've got to mess with your phone to even get into the car to, to it's, it can be a, a, th a whole thing. Anyway, Smart Summon is a neat feature that's a lot of fun to play with and definitely shows a lot of promise uh, and demonstrates that Tesla is making progress in getting their vehicles to navigate different challenging environments. Though obviously there's still lots of room for improvement here and it will be uh, pretty exciting to watch that happen. I mean, I've, I've been playing with the feature for a little while now and I mean, I, I don't I don't blame this poor guy's reaction. I mean, he's he's standing there watching this car drive through a parking lot with nobody in it. And that's just not something that hardly anyone's been exposed to. And it, it I can I understand that it's real weird to see. And it's really cool. But as Tesla owners, we need to use this feature in its current state very carefully. And we need to be very watchful of the environments that we're using it in. And we need to make sure that you know, we don't, through its use or misuse, um, harm public opinion of these technologies. This needs to be something that is, you know, neat and inspiring to people, not something that is uh, eliciting of, of fear, fearful, mistrusting reactions. So message to the, to the rest of my fellow Tesla owners, please use this responsibly. Anyway, like I said, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions about the feature or any other things you want me to poke at regarding Smart Summon, go ahead and leave that in the comments down below and we'll see how that goes. I definitely have a lot more experiments that I want to try and just to see, you know, how I can push the limits of this feature in, in a safe, controlled way that, you know, doesn't endanger property or, or people or anything like that. Keep an eye out for those videos in the future and as always, I'll see you later. Oh, this could be good or really, really stupid.